What's up, Samurai? We are back again with some more Wayfinder, and this is going to end up being a tips and tricks video for you all. When you dodge, you see how your character glows? That's actually the iframe window or invulnerability frames, meaning that you can dodge through attacks and not take any damage. Another thing that I don't really see many people use, but is entirely possible to do, is if you're standing perfectly still with no input on your movement, and then you press the dodge, you'll end up doing a back step. Fast traveling is another thing that the game will introduce to you, but did you know that when you're in this menu, all you gotta do is press F and you can open up the world map, which will allow you to open up the other map that you're not on and then you can fast travel to any location that you've already unlocked when you first start playing this game you're not going to have access to your social menu but don't worry you just got to continue the main quest about up to the brood mother or until you go into the highlands or something like that and then you'll end up having your social menu pop up your friend code will be up here that you can share with people and then you can end up partying up now, on the topic of playing with your friends, when you're in a party with your mates, you might not actually see them in the world that you're in. That's because they're actually not in your server, even if they're in the same area. Now, rather than being something you could easily do by just opening your map and summoning your friends, in fact, you have to interact with a fast travel point, and then you'll see a little prompt down here that'll say press O, and that will initiate summoning you or your friends to each other's worlds. If you go into a dungeon while you're in a party, it should just pull them into the dungeon no matter where they are. Another thing is in the game settings, you may want to change this, you might not, uh, but you'll notice that there is enable cross play. So I have that off by default because I've noticed a lot of issues with cross play being on. Another thing is when you're selecting a dungeon, uh, you can see in the top left there is matchmaking. So you can toggle that on and off as well. Another thing is if you have matchmaking on and you join a dungeon, a lot of times you'll actually see other people further ahead in the dungeon. So if you open up your map at any point, sometimes they'll have already gathered the fast travel points. So you'll be able to teleport to those so that you can catch up with them. Another thing to mention is that when you are selecting dungeons, you can choose an imbuement. This is gonna be something that'll come into play a little bit later in the game more so, but when you select an imbuement, it's basically going to end up giving you a random debuff in the dungeon, but it'll also change the loot tables. Later on, you'll actually be able to select two imbuements at the same time, which makes the dungeons a lot more interesting, but also a lot more deadly. So another thing you might see players mess with, which is the player housing. Eventually the main quest will end up unlocking a side quest in town over here by Westgate that you can end up picking up and that will introduce you into your apartment. Inside your apartment is pretty cool because you can at any time go to editing mode and just start picking up and placing items down. Um, you can manage artifacts, manage permissions. Artifacts is going to end up being a really important thing because it's not functional yet, uh, but basically there is going to end up being these items that you'll be able to place down on your walls uh, and, and you can interact with them or use that menu to activate them, which will essentially end up giving you passive buffs while you're out adventuring. Another thing to reference while we're in here, just for the sake of the future, is that pets eventually will end up having animations where you can pet them. There isn't any yet. And they'll also end up having practical applications eventually as well. Apparently they want to make it so that they'll either give you buffs or follow you around in the world and maybe even fight alongside you, which is interesting because the top reward for the first battle pass is a spider pet. So later down the line, that might be significant. The funny thing is that when your character levels up, they're just going to get passive stats and unlock different abilities and so on and so forth. But the affinity stats that we're actually leveling up is going to affect the weapon that we have equipped, the artifacts or you know accessories that we have equipped and more importantly it's going to affect the echoes that you have equipped which is essentially going to end up being mods from warframe in this game speaking of it's definitely worthwhile to echo infusion which is leveling up the echo you want to do that as quickly as possible to just some of the basic ones that you get because you're going to have to level these up so that you're strong enough to go into the later dungeons to get better echoes in the first place and then once you find a replacement you can actually just use this maxed out echo which will give a crap ton of xp towards your new one now something else to mention is that while character level and weapon level are independent of one another weapons themselves are going to stay at their level no matter what character you're on so you can see that my typhoon axe is at level 11 because i've been using it on a different character however mastery unfortunately is not account bound meaning that you essentially have to 
dedicate yourself to using one specific weapon on one specific character in order to max out the mastery so that you can then start getting different passives. Another thing that the game isn't all up in your face about is that you will be able to level up your abilities. You won't be able to max them out. You won't have enough, but I'd recommend going for whatever ability fits your play style. When you're in combat, I would also suggest using your abilities as often as you want. There's not much point in saving them because you can just use them on cooldown. There's not really any mana or anything like that in this game. Now, on the other hand, if you end up getting your ultimate ability or your weapon skill, as you can see in the bottom right, I can activate my dagger ability anytime I want. Those you might want to save for more difficult foes later down the line, like if you're fighting a boss or dealing with a wave defense at the end of a dungeon. Another thing too is if you see these round glowing orbs, that's just going to end up being a memory fragment, which is an item used for many crafting recipes. Oh, and if you end up seeing one of these diamond things right here, more often than not, that'll end up being a better resource that you want to go for, like an echo or something. Also, if you see those shiny little pieces of ore on the ground, smack them to get the resource. You're going to thank me later because you need a lot of this ore for crafting. Another thing too is at the top middle of your screen, you're going to see the three chests slowly filling up as the bar increases from defeating enemies and stuff and doing random events. That will go down if you or a teammate dies and will affect these chests here at the end. So in our cool little movement tech that people are doing is momentum jumping or wave dashing. I don't know how you would want to say it, but it basically is the same as Warframe where uh, you basically jump, dash, jump, jump when you're uh, getting close to the ground. I'm not doing it correctly, but you can see that if you do it properly, you can carry your momentum from your dash into a jump. Oh, and one more thing. As you're going through dungeons and exploring the world and so on and so forth, you might stumble across a gloomstone shard. And if you ever end up going to a crafting table, you can convert those shards into colored gloomstones. Gloomstones are going to end up being a required resource for a handful of different things in the game, but for the most part, they're used when leveling up your character and weapons. If you ever decide to break a gloomstone down for shards, you are going to get half of the shards back that you invested into crafting it. But it is something worth noting because as you get later and later in the game, you might not need gray gloomstones as much. And on the topic of the crafting table, you can also obviously craft imbuements as well at this location. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any tips that you think that I may have missed in this video, you can always sound off in the comments. Uh, you know, I'm always open to not only your criticisms, but also listening to advice from you guys about different aspects of the game so that I can ultimately end up presenting better and better videos to introduce more people to this wonderful laggy game. In either case, if you do want to end up seeing more Wayfinder content, I'm planning on playing it long into the future so you can subscribe for more. But more importantly, I would very much appreciate if you would leave a like before you ended up leaving and have yourselves a wonderful day.